Divine Truth Assistance Group Group assistance sessions putting principles of divine truth into action. This recording is from the Developing My Will to Love group and is part of the Education in Love series. In the Understanding My Will Q&A presentation, Jesus answers questions from the audience about the material covered in the previous presentation, Understanding My Will. Recorded on the 26th of February 2016 in Newseville, Queensland, Australia. All right. Um, so now's the time to have a bit of a Q&A about our previous session. So is it Tony? Thank you. Microphones, you're coming your way. AJ, in, um, when I was um, 25, I had three abortions within about a five-month period. And yep. lately I've been looking into my complete lack of will in that situation because I'd come home from the, ho the hospital or surgery yep. and um, my boyfriend that I was living with, in order to stop my grief, he would not um, accede to the normal period. You know, you had to leave a certain amount of time before you made love again yep. and he would do it to try and shut me down. Right. And um, so... And, and then I still didn't even have any will yeah. after the third one. A friend had to make arrangements to pick me up from the hospital. Yeah. And um, she kept me hidden in her house for two days. And then she put me on a plane back east so that he would never find me again. Right. So why did I have such a complete lack of will? Well, firstly, can I say there's no such thing as a complete lack of will? like a thing I wasn't even a person and yes like but you were actually exercising your will yes, that's true. <laughs> so firstly <laughs> we need to make sure that we understand that when even when we completely allow our will to be overtaken by another we are exercising our soul-based will and this is something that you're not appreciating in your question so this is an indication yes there's issues of responsibility that yes. you are not taking responsibility here do you understand? Yes. Now, now, so that, that's the first thing I need to say to you. Firstly, you need to learn to take responsibility. Thank you. Whenever you give over your will to another, it is your will's choice to do so. Yeah. That's something that you're responsible for doing. You follow? Now, now it's even, even with the friend who actually withdrew, withdrew you from the situation and sent you home, you gave your will to her. Yes. So you did it to both. You did it both to the boyfriend and to her. Yes. But who made the choice to have the abortions? Me. You did. Mm. And, and so, so you can't say that no. the choice to have the abortion was driven by other people's will. You follow me? No, but, my, no, but I don't understand why I just turned into this. I understand what you're saying. And oh, well, I haven't got there the yet. So <laughs> I haven't finished my, uh, you know, I haven't finished my answer. Um, you exercised your will to avoid taking responsibility for the decisions you were making. That's how you exercised your will. Now, the question you need to ask yourself is why did I do that? And even in the question you've asked me, you are still avoiding taking responsibility for how you're deciding to use your will. You, you gave your will to other people in this situation, but also you did take the action of aborting three children, right? Which was, which was a personal decision. Now, now, that personal decision was driven by a number of factors which you've got to find. And I won't go into them here because I want to uh, have a lot of questions and we could spend the whole, you know, f 50 minutes on this one question. But um, you need to desire to discover why you even allowed yourself to have the abortion, firstly. You need to allow, because that's the most severe decision you made in that choice. So, so the number one thing is that you, you affected the will of three other people that's number one. That's the biggest thing you've got to face and you're not, you're not facing it at this stage because you believe the sequence of events happened because you really didn't have a defined sense of your own will. But actually the sequence of events happened because you had a defined sense of your will 
to abort three children and you could have chosen differently, right? Now, there's justifications as to why you abort three children. You need to examine those, but you haven't even touched examining those yet. You haven't even wanted to examine those because you're too busy blaming your boyfriend, right, at the time. So that's the first thing I ne need you to be aware of. Secondly, is that you were obviously taught to give your will over to people. And you ha still have a tendency to do it, right? Yep, so it's not a healed... Pander to women. Yeah, you pander to people. Do, do what people want you to do. Now, you, there's reasons why you do that. And, and you call that giving up your will. But I actually call it exercising your will to do what other people want. Right? And there's reasons why you do that that need to also be examined. My mother told me that I was abused by my grandfather, but I've never known whether it was true, and I've just been assuming that my lack of will is related to that early lack of will, but I don't know whether it's true, so I don't know. You know, I spent years, I thought, feeling into it, and you say I haven't felt my emotions, so I've been in self-deception that all those years. So well, how can you feel your emotions about something when you don't know whether it's true? You know how you said before? Identify. It doesn't matter if it's true. To feel your emotions, it doesn't matter if it's true. What matters is what do you feel, allow the feelings to flow, and you'll find out whether it's true. Right? The key, the key with feeling your emotions is, there's two keys to feeling your emotions. What is God's truth? And... I am just going to choose to feel my emotions no matter what they are, no matter what they tell me, right? Now, so, so you know, what I just said is a bit of shock to most of you, right? So, so let's elucidate a bit further. We've, I've said to you, you will not feel emotions unless you get to know God's truth, not, not yours, right? So you need to find out God's truth on the matter. So what, with regard to childhood abuse, what's God's truth? It's wrong, shouldn't, shouldn't happen, it's a har very detrimental or harmful effect upon the child, it's not the child's fault, and there's quite a lot of other things that are God's truth about that particular event. Agreed? Right. Knowing all of that doesn't mean that you've been abused. Okay, does it? What, and if you have been abused, there will be inside of you your truth, which is emotional, is it not? So there'll be emotions within inside of you that actually prove that you've been abused. Will there not? If a person being abused, there will always be emotions inside of them that prove they've been abused. Right? That, that is a fact. Right? You're not going to know whether these emotions prove the truth that you've been abused or not until you feel them is that not also true while you deny them you are not feeling them and so therefore you will not know and most people who've been abused prefer to not know this is the problem right so in other words they get told or somebody tells them that they've been abused or whatever but they prefer to not know the trouble with that is that i could tell you that you have been abused when you haven't And because you prefer to not know, it just is going to depend on other injuries as to whether you accept what I'm saying to you or not. Now that's a problem, isn't it? Because you, you could believe you've been abused when you haven't, or you could have been abused and then not accept that you have. And both, both are problems, right? Both have emotional reasons why they are within you. The key is to feel your emotions and release them so to experience them is how you feel them, isn't it? And then you'll know for certain. Now how I know you haven't done that is because you still can't tell me for certain. You said, my mother said I've been abused. And that's not the same as you knowing you've been abused. You follow me? So therefore you have not felt these emotions, even though you think you have, you have not felt these emotions yet, because once you've felt these emotions, you would know. 
you would know whether you've been abused or not. But you know what you want to do? You want to know before you feel. And this is a big problem, right? But I don't understand what that's got to do with the exercise of your will, aside from the fact that you want to know before you feel. I was just wondering if my will had been destroyed as a child, and that's why I didn't have the will when I was 25. But I, I can see that... No, I you've been taught as a child to not take responsibility for yeah. your will. That is more truthful. I can see now from what you said. Can you see in your childhood how that happened? Can you see how both parents would have taken responsibility for your choices and decisions for you? That would then cause you to believe that you don't have to take responsibility for anything. This is what causes you to go back, like to decide to go back and get pregnant again and go back and get pregnant again. But then also to go and have another abortion and go another abortion because you don't want to take responsibility for the previous choice you've made. Yeah. So, the, so the real issue from your childhood is you were taught to not take responsibility for your choices that doesn't feel true but thank you very much because I'll I'll, um, I'll um, feel into that. can I say Janie you don't want it to be true right at the moment the feeling in you is that you do not want to take responsibility for your choices you you even the question is demonstrating how you haven't taken responsibility for your choices yeah. You know, you, you, you've said a number of things. Firstly, that you had three um, abortions, which is proof that you haven't wanted to take responsibility for the choice to have sex even. Yes. Right? Yes. You didn't even Absolutely. see it as a choice. No, so strange. Yeah. But, but, so that's, and a person doesn't see something as a choice because they don't want to take responsibility for the fact they're making a choice. You follow? Yes. Yeah. So, so in that regard, you didn't want to take the choice, but also in regard to your emotions surrounding potential abuse, you've made the choice to not feel them. That's you not, that's you take, not wanting to take responsibility for what's happened to you. Yes. Not wanting to do something about what's happened to you. That's another choice. So there's already quite a number of things that you're saying in your question which demonstrate that you're unwilling to make a choice that's actually loving. And then there's a temptation to be willing to blame other people for the choices you've made. Yeah. And in fact, you place the responsibility to get away from the man on another person, which is another desire to avoid the exercise of your own will. She had to take responsibility for me. It was terrible. Yeah. Well, it's terrible to put other people in that, in that place where they are having to make choices and decisions because you are unwilling to make them yourself. I think that I've led the most incredibly irresponsible life. Well, I'm saying to you why, and you've said you don't agree with it, but I've said to you no, why. just my parents, that, that doesn't feel quite right about my parents. A person parents, doesn't take, it, make obviously. irresponsible choices all their life without there being some parental cause. And what, this is the problem, this is why you're not resolving the actual emotional issue, because you want to believe your parents were, didn't cause these problems. Oh, look, I'm happy to lay anything on my parents. No, you're not. You <laughs> no, you're not. Uh, I wonder whether I was... You're happy to lay anything on your parents because they taught you that they're happy to take anything from you and you don't see that as the problem. No, <laughs> you I see, don't. you're happy to lay other things on it, but, but you're not happy to see that you don't have a developed will because they taught you to not have one. And you then have chosen after that point in time to not develop one. Yeah. And you've then chosen after that point in time to place res put the responsibility back on the people around you rather than take responsibility in your personal life. It's true. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. And even in your question, you still don't want to take responsibility for the abortions and you don't want to take responsibility for the fact that you had sex in order to have an abortion. That's right. That's and you right. don't want to take responsibility for the fact that you chose to not even avoid the situation and that you, you actually wanted someone else to come along and rescue you. Mm -hmm. And this is all an indication that your view of love is that other people will make your choices for you yeah. and other people will then rescue you from the choices you've made and that's their demonstration of love to you. It's true. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and it's not. It's... It, while they, you know, while the lady was loving to you by getting you out of the situation, at the end of the day, you weren't loving to her by forcing her to do it. No. You follow me? No. But you wanted her to do it so that somebody would demonstrate to you that they loved you, 
but and there's the ch so so there's obviously feelings in your childhood where you weren't loved, oh. and that and that and that you could avoid responsibility by trying to get other people to love you rather than you having to love yourself. So there's quite a lot of different e e issues that in the issue you raise, but I must point out to you that that you those questions show you. Right, that there must be an under there's, there's, there is a developed use of your will, and the developed use of your will is that other people should take responsibility for my choices. Yes, that's the development of your will at this stage, and that's going to have to change if yes. you deal with any of these issues. Thank Does that make sense? Yep. Um, if we come down to Deidre. <coughs> Hi. Um, for the, all the other presentations that we've had before the first one, I've been excited. I've been hanging on every <laughs> single word. I've been like, yeah, yes, no, it's you, an answer to my prayer. But most of you are pretty confronted with this one. But this one, it's like, yeah, it was it was a struggle to stay awake. I mean, I obviously did stay awake, and mm -hmm. I drank a lot of water and all that. So, is it my will to not? listen or not i because i'm here it's like i want to i want to but so am i using willpower to why don't you want to hear about these things let's look at that issue because because a lot of you are in this boat so why don't you want to hear about these things tell you tell me if we come across to laura and then on this side uh, to die because if we hear it, we'll have to take action or it will also require us to look at sincerely um, at those four things, basically to avoid our pain. So require action, but what's the underlying issue with requiring action? Like, what, what's the problem there? If we come to Linda. It, it's about avoiding personal responsibility, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah, avoiding personal responsibility. Let's just write that down. The reason why you want the world's definition of love and the world's definition of how to use your will, Bill, Bill, Bill response, e Bill, e T. Um, is because you don't want to take personal responsibility for the exercise of your will. And you know the whole world thinks this way. We see it all the time, all the time. The whole um, things like unemployment, where did that come from? Unemployment benefits. From the world not wanting to take responsibility for its will. It comes from this feeling in, in the end that, that external forces control my life and I should not be expected to, to, to take action and, and change my life when external forces have influenced the outcome of my life, right? So it comes from this issue of not wanting to take responsibility. And, and there's so many things in this world that are, that are like that, so many things where people don't want to take responsibility. Like you go out and you jump up and down on a mat and you injure yourself so you sue the owners. Right, like to me, it's like, yeah, like you jumped up and down on the mat, you, you know, you have a responsibility to know your limitations, you have a responsibility to understand your education, you have a responsibility to know, you know, how inflexible or flexible your body is, you have a responsibility for the decision you made, you could have chosen it di differently, but now you're blaming someone else for the decision you made, you know? I see it all the time in relationships. He made me angry. That's you not wanting to take responsibility for, for the fact you're angry. That comes from something inside of you that you're denying. And instead you'd like to blame somebody else and say that they made you that way. No, they didn't. The only people you could say that to is your parents. And, and even then, it's not strictly correct because their parents have made them that way and so forth if you take that to the end. And the reality is all of us have a responsibility to bring our lives into harmony with love and truth no matter who made us what. You follow me? So, so it, there is a deep avoidance of personal responsibility. 
This is a big problem with regard to the use of our will. Why is God wanting us to understand our will? So that you understand that if you use your will positively, there'll be positive benefits. If you use your will negatively or avoid the exercise of your will, there'll be negative consequences. That God wants you to get to know that you're responsible for the outcome in your life. You follow me? And while sure... Like, a, like somebody can d decide to have a war, but at the end of the day, they can't decide to have a war without your agreement in your heart. And this is what I get, get at with a lot of groups, is that at the end of the day, most of you are afraid and you want somebody to rescue you. This is what drives war. Because you know, when you get afraid, you want somebody, the government, some, some in undefined you know, thing, to come and decide to make you safe again. This is, this, and this actually causes war. This emotion that you're unwilling to, rec to recognise and release. Isn't that your responsibility? Isn't it mine? If I have fear within me and I want other people, the, particularly the emotion, that I want other people to come to my rescue, surely that particular emotion is the emotion driving the reason why I want you to come to my rescue even if you might be violent doing it. Right? That's me not taking responsibility for the fact that this emotion is within me. Uh, we, we are adepts at not taking responsibility for the choices and decisions we make and putting the responsibility of those choices and decisions on somebody else. We, 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 you know, that is something we've almost perfected to an art form. It's a big, it's a big problem. And, and you're correct, Linda, that is a big issue when it comes to using your will because a person who truly engages their will takes personal responsibility for everything that they choose to do, everything that's happening in their life. Even if an accident occurs, they take responsibility for the fact that they were there, their will motivated them to be there, their, their decisions that they made and so forth motivated them to be there. Now, I'm not saying that it's not unloving to do something to help that person. I'm just saying that we often take you know take no personal responsibility for the fact that we were there even right that we made choices we made decisions to put us in that position right and this is the thing we need to take far more personal responsibility and in fact this is one of the things that god wants to teach you about your will that your will means that most of, you know almost all of your life and of course when i say almost only it's only the things that other people just choose to do out of harmony love and truth that can influence your life negatively and even if that happens you can get yourself into a loving condition where that doesn't actually influence you negatively anymore you can actually get into the condition where once you're at one with god you don't even have any fear of that occurring and when they do it right when they hang you on a stake or something you you're still not hurt by the action you can get to that point right, but most of us don't have faith in that but that's that's what i would classify as supreme taking of responsibility isn't it which is what god wants us to do linda so i'm um, <laughs> Questions lost is it strange, isn't it? It's about um, it's about the the avoiding personal response addictions. Every addiction I have is yep. basically an effort to avoid personal responsibility, isn't it? Correct. Yeah. Correct. Every addiction you have, because what what is an addiction? A whole you've got a soul based emotion of hurt inside of yourself, right? So there's an emotion that feels hurt inside of yourself. That creates like a hole that you want other people to feel. So what do you do? Instead of releasing the emotion, you choose to not take responsibility for the, the fact the emotion is in you. Not, you don't have to take responsibility for the fact that it got created because that could have been done by you or others. All you've got to do is take responsibility for the fact that it's in you. No, it's not in somebody else, it's in you. And the only person who has control of what can be released from you is you. So, so what we do is we don't take responsibility for that. So now what we do is we grab a whole heap of souls of other people and we suck them dry, right? So that that particular emotion doesn't have to be felt. That's what an addiction is. 
right? So every sing this is why addiction is sin. Every single emotion of hurt that you refuse to release inside of you, you will have a demand to your external environment to support, and that is not taking personal responsibility for the fact that the emotion is in you, and only you can release it. Only you can make that change through the exercise of your will. Right? So this is a big issue. Every time we're angry and frustrated with other people, we're not taking personal responsibility. Right? Every time. For our choices, our decisions, our hurt, our feelings that have created most of these things that are going on. Now, the only time that does not apply is if you're a child. Because the reality is a child is under the control of somebody else. And, and I'd say, um, I suppose there are other circumstances that I can think of, but they have, are extreme, and that is, let's say, you were put in prison for their whole life. There's another example of maybe where your will is now under the control of somebody else for that entire period of time. But you could still release the emotion, couldn't you? You could still deal with it emotionally and, and work your way through it. You could. You could choose to. Right? So even that's still under your control. Right? You know, if you were put in a, in a you know, room for the rest of your life, what you choose to do with that is still under your control. There's, there's famous people who have learnt that, that, who've learnt that truth. Like Nelson Mandela, one of those people, right? Who learnt that truth. In prison for most of his life, he learnt that actually... His emotional responses to everything were, were completely under his own control and therefore his responsibility. Right? There's people who have talked about that, like lots of people have talked about that, but, but the majority of us don't want, to, don't want to accept that, right? If we go to Pamela and if we come down to Jennifer here. Thanks. Um, there's a very well worth film seeing at the moment called Room. Yeah. Really worth seeing on just that topic. Right. Okay. <laughs> Jennifer? Thank you. Um, it's a question of will and sin. Yep. Scenario. A person is damaged badly in their childhood. Mm -hmm. They have... I, I would say that applies to pretty much all of us. Oh, but yeah, go on. yeah, yeah. This is just a <laughs> scenario. Yeah. Example, um, this person then has a stroke mm -hmm. because of all the stresses that they've had in their life. No, it's not caused by the stresses they've had in their oh. life. Oh, okay, sorry. What I'm is it caused by? It's caused by them avoiding releasing emotions that yeah. cause the stroke. Yeah. So it's yeah, not caused by all the pressures they've had in their life. Okay. <laughs> so even our see, even our statements yeah. now are out of <laughs> harmony with God's truth. Yeah. yeah. But go on. Okay. So um, they've made a choice to avoid emotions which have yes. caused them to have a stroke. Yes. Yes. So they get married. Right. They still survived the stroke. Yep. They survived the stroke. Yes. Yeah, sorry. They survived the stroke. They choose to get married. Yes. Um, the partner of the one who had the stroke is told. Um, be aware that he will exhibit behaviour of a six-year-old from time to time because that's what the stroke... That's what the stroke caused, a destruction of the brain in a certain area, yes. Yeah. Yep. Then he has... So, so now he's, he's allowing the influence of another person, a change of their behaviour in order to support the fact that he's had a stroke. So he's not taking responsibility for releasing the emotion. No. And he's also yes, not exactly. taking now responsibility for his, that he's impacting somebody else's life with it. Exactly. And then he going. has children. Then he has children, yep. So now he's impacting some more lives. So he's... Um, and he has a whole lot of bad behaviour, including alcoholism and so forth. Right, which are all choices. Yes, OK. And got nothing to do with his stroke. Uh, yeah, but the No, well, what, what's the but? Sorry, sorry. They're all choices that have nothing to do with his stroke. Alcoholism caused by the suppression of sadness. He obviously wanted to suppress his sadness, which has caused him to gravitate towards alcohol. Okay, yes. 
um, he is excused for his behaviour because yes, and why? Why is that? Stroke. Why does he get excused from his behaviour? Because everybody thinks physical illness means you've got to make allowances. No, it doesn't. Yes. Right, that's a false belief about love. No, a physical illness doesn't mean you have to make allowances. You've got to deal with the cause of the physical illness. The cause of the stroke is his own intention to suppress, his, uh, to suppress a whole heap of things using his intellect, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. which is his choice. Mm -hmm. Okay, so keep going. But the child grows up mm -hmm. to believe that daddy cannot help some of his behaviour. Yeah, which is a heap of crap. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Um, <laughs> <sighs> sorry, I didn't know where. I just wanted. I, I, my question was about whether. Can I say, this Jennifer? This person is in sinning. I, can I say this is an um, example of how much justification we have for the world's definition of love? Okay. Statement after statement after statement after statement, all going to a subsequent result when every, uh, like I have to correct every single statement because every single statement is out of harmony with God's definition of love. And this tells us how much we believe the world's viewpoint of love and mm -hmm. the world's viewpoint of truth. We believe it so much that we, when we tell a story even, we're saying, this happened because of that. No, it didn't. This happened because of that. No, it didn't. This happened because of that. No, it didn't. And, 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 and in the end, if you, if you trace all of these events back, you can see there's, there's moment after moment after moment after moment after moment where we're already justifying the world's viewpoint of what's true here. Right? Yeah. We could do the same with cancer. We could yeah. do the same with you know, some kind of accident that happened down the road. You can, the reality is God's laws are perfect. All of these events are happening perfectly. And the reason why they're happening perfectly is because the law of attraction is perfect. And, and all of these events are happening perfectly, not only to help the person take responsibility, the person who's in the centrepiece of these particular events, but also all the people around them are, have had attractions so that they address things that they're not taking responsibility for too you follow yes yeah. i do and I, I just wanted to clarify sure that on the one hand i grew up with that story yes i know on the other hand i could see the hypocrisy of I course could see that choices could be made and they weren't correct because but your dad didn't want to take responsibility your mum didn't want to take responsibility the doctors don't want to find out what the real cause is and so forth and so forth it's just, it just this is the trouble with the, with with even analyzing anything in this world a lot of the times is that there are error after error after error after error after error after error and then we hope to have be some kind of resolution after all that <laughs> of course the result is going to be pretty negative Right, so yes, you now have the feeling, particularly with a male, you've got to do whatever they want. You've got to make allowances for them. If they make, mist if they make choices that are out of harmony with love, well, you've got to consider their physical limitations and so forth, and it's all a bunch of crap. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate that, because I trusted my own intuition about telling truth, but then I became troublemaker for the family so but it, yeah it's a whole big story. yeah and then of course Thanks got punished for that clarity. right yeah I did. Mm. thank you yeah nobody wants to, the, the the thing that many of you learnt in your childhood was that nobody wants to hear the truth uh, and that's why a lot of times you don't want to hear it yourself now and don't want to tell it um it's not true of course because inside of our soul there is a desire an internal harmony with truth we just need to recognize it but it's not going to be there and while there's so much error and and we tell ourselves these stories honestly this happened that happened this happened that happened not even understanding the causes of any of it yeah and this is a big problem yep laura um, would a beneficial exercise be like um, I avoid personal responsibilities in my soul to start to find out the justifications, the excuses, and to work through? Um, of course. Through what the yeah, of course. About? Yeah, of course. Is it is it an, is it a, 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 a thing of preclusion? Like, there's no point telling yourself to take the responsibility if that's writing. So you've got to work through 
of course work through it yeah no you can't change not taking personal responsibility just by by willpower right. you know that's why the majority of us don't do it like we've been taught over and and this generation of children has taught it even more like like man it's like full on when it comes to this generation of children because many of the parents go oh, i'm not going to be like my parents were they were bossy and they were punishing and they built the children they controlled their will of time i'm just going to let their children roam free and and before you know it what does that teach them there's no consequences no penalty for bad behavior there's no there's no sin in the process of doing what you want right there's no concern for love of other people there's no concern for how other people feel about what you're doing and those kind of things. So, so while I'm saying you don't have to care about what people think and feel about the situation, I'm saying you, a person who loves certainly would be concerned about how, how other people are responding to their negative behaviour. So the first, when someone comes up to me and says, look, you did this to me and you did that to me, the very first thing I do is go, okay, firstly, did I do those particular things? Secondly, what was my underlying motivation if I did do them? And, and what was my motivation? And, and, and were those particular things actually unloving from God's perspective? And if they were, then yes, I need to take full responsibility for the outcome of, of this particular event. But if my, if my goal was intention was loving and, and I might not have done, even engaged it perfectly but my goal and intention might be loving and my actions were loving in terms of it have a positive outcome then, then them blaming me for this particular event, not on. Right? You need to be able to, be able to work out those particular things for yourself. Yep. And the only way you're going to do that is by taking some responsibility for what's inside of you, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, if we go back to Kate and then back up the back to the both girls. Thank you. Just going back to the heavy feelings like some of us are experiencing in the room. Mm -hmm. So is that, is that because my, I don't want to take personal responsibility for the the things in my soul that are like open to oppression uh, so I'm mm. now attracting spirits who are who like are in an addiction with that and because I haven't healed it like yeah. that's my issue of personal responsibility yeah so what I'm noticing is that most of you do not want to take personal responsibility for loving yourself you don't you want someone else to love you. You do not want to primarily be responsible for loving yourself. You see? So what that does is that uh, that opens you to all sorts of influences that are negative. You don't want to work through the issue as to why you can't love yourself. And so what you do is you avoid those, those by creating a whole heap of addictions where you want other people to love you and other people to tell you. you. You do this with me all the time, honestly. You want me to tell you what's wrong with your life. Like, that's an addiction. That's out of harmony with love, actually. A person who's taking full responsibility in the, and for the use of their will would actually work out what's wrong with their life. From God's perspective, you've got God with you all the time. You could choose to do that. But we don't, want to, we don't choose it because we don't want to love ourselves. Because when, when we love ourselves, we feel initially when we, when we try to love ourselves, we feel absolutely terrible. And the reason why is because it probably means that we feel no one else does love us and we don't want to feel that emotion. Right? So what we do is we madly run around trying to get everybody to love us so that we can avoid the fact that we don't love ourselves because if, if you truly loved yourself and you truly felt you had some worth, you wouldn't be running around trying to get everybody to love you, would you? you no, no. You'd, just, you'd love you and so... You'd you, know the truth. You'd know that. the truth. You'd start engaging that and, and you'd start wanting to act in harmony with that, obviously. And that means that you wouldn't need anybody to love you. But if somebody does love you, it also means that you would appreciate it. Most of you, when somebody loves you, you don't appreciate it at all. Because, because you have a demand that they should have in the first place. 
you don't see love as a gift, right? And this is all exercising your will to not see love as a gift, to not take personal responsibility that at some point you've got to learn to love yourself. And, and when you do, you'll feel completely different about that particular subject. And not only that, you won't care so much about what the world thinks of you when you go and do something they disagree with when you know it's in harmony with love. So it won't bother you then either, right? You want to ask more, Kate? Can I ask another question? Sure, you can. Yeah, so I'm seeing that that the problem of of engaging my will to take personal responsibility, like that, has at its core. Like again, I don't want to feel my painful emotions, mm -hmm. and I need to engage my will to feel my my painful emotions no what you need to firstly do is engage your will to feel about why you don't want to feel your painful emotions like the soul has been made to feel its emotion right the fact that you're not feeling your emotion means that you don't want to right so i don't want to I'm responsible be responsible i don't want to And then if you truly wanted to change your soul-based will, you'd have to release from yourself all the reasons why you don't want to. So that would mean discovering them. Why don't you want to get, you know, get rid of this feeling that you don't want to feel your emotion? What are your beliefs about emotion that cause you to feel that you don't want to feel emotion? Use your will to access those beliefs. Okay, yeah, that's an area I'm really resistive, so I can... Yeah. So then, yeah, I can see that once, if those blocks were not present anymore, like then I might make a different choice. Like I might not only that, you'd probably naturally feel the emotion. Cool, well, that'd be. So an emotion would come up without you almost even needing to access it because it's a natural state of the soul. It's it's only unnatural now because I've got this layer on top of it that says I don't want to do it. Mm. That's my will being exercised. I don't want to feel my emotion. So, so if you really want to change that will, the very first thing is you've got to recognise that you're actually exercising your will to not to want to do it. Right? Then you've got to work your way through why you don't want to do it. And that's where lots of beliefs come up like, well, if I let go of emotion, other people will harm me. Other people will judge me. If I let go of emotion, the world will view me as an idiot or I might go crazy. There's all sorts of reasons why we might have a will-based, soul-based will to not feel our emotion. And we need to work our way through those particular things. And during that phase, God can, you can ask God for help and God will tell you as much truth as you're open to hearing. Right? And if you can't hear anything from God, then I don't want to do that either. <laughs> I don't want to hear what the truth is. Why wouldn't we want to hear what the truth is about our emotion? Probably because we don't want to feel our emotion. There's no other real reason unless we had faith that if we had, if we had faith that feeling our emotion is the way forward, then of course we would feel it. But it might be that we need to work on our faith and develop our faith and we'll talk, we'll talk tomorrow about how to do that. But, but the reality is, this feeling of don't want to, most of us don't want to feel. <laughs> we want to tell ourselves, I do really want to, yeah. while at the same time our life is demonstrating, no, you don't. Let's get honest, you don't. <laughs> All right? So be honest. I don't. Do I want to change that? Well, it's my choice to change that, not no one else's. It's not some indiscriminate thing or some spirit influence that's causing that state. That's me making a choice. And when we're discovering the reasons why, I'm just trying to link it all together with the start part of your discussion as well. Mm -hmm. Is that like we've got to be careful that those are not excuses, though, don't we? Oh, of course, we do. Because you know how we were talking on the first days, like a lot of them are just are just justifying, like like what I was sharing. Yeah, the soul how says I, I don't I want to, cope. and so the mind says these are all the reasons why you don't want to, right? <laughs> So this is all the reason why it's a bad idea. So how do we discover what the really what the real reason is? Well, you can see straight away we need to be more sincere, more don't we? Mm, if yeah. we were more sincere, we'd be going, hang on a sec, I'm just telling myself a bunch of stories because I want to believe them so that I don't have to feel my emotion. So what's the real reason why I don't want to feel my emotions? 
What, 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 what do I believe is going to happen for sure? You know, and this tells me, oh, I haven't got much faith in emotion. I haven't got much faith in God. I haven't got, and, and therefore I can develop those particular things if I use my will to do so, if I really want to change. Can you see why the average person doesn't want to change? Is because the reality is the I don't want to is, is pretty majorly developed inside of us about many things that we believe are pain. Right? We have an aversion to emotional pain. We prefer, as I've said in the past in this, in this presentation, we, we are so in aversion to emotional pain that we'd prefer to have physical pain rather than emotional pain. Mm. That's how bad it is. Many, some of us would rather die than feel emotional pain. A person with a stroke, a person with a heart attack, a person with a, um, you know, cancer, a person, all of these diseases that we've now, do, you know, that demonstrate we're out of harmony with God's definition of love. All of those diseases are there because we don't want to feel some emotional pain and we'd prefer to feel some feel to physical pain rather than feel emotional pain it's like extreme the extent i'm just starting to see like the intellectual extent the physical extent yeah that will go to to just avoid it's it's incredible isn't it it is and all the confu like, like i'm in a lot of confusion about it because you know it's sort of shocking even the in a confusion way. that i've created about like this yeah it's no, part it's shocking. of the don't want to part of the resistance yeah and we really need to be honest about the i don't want to we do we need to get really real about that but that again getting real about that is an exercise of your will right most of us would rather tell ourselves we're doing something when we're not doing something we would right we are great liars to ourselves unfortunately uh, you lie to yourself. Why do you lie to yourself? Because it prevents emotion. We learnt that three days ago when we talked about truth, right? We don't want the truth because if we hear the truth, it will access emotion. We don't want to access emotion, so we don't want to hear the truth either. Uh, even this issue of taking personal responsibility, we don't want to do that either. We want someone else to take responsibility for our life for a whole heap of emotional reasons all of which are out of harmony with love. So they're all sin. Yeah. Can you see the sincerity that's going to be needed if you want to progress with God? Uh, you're going to need to become a pretty sincere person <laughs> in order to progress. Now, we're right up the back with the girls, if that's all right. Who's first? Renee's first. Um, so when you were saying the other day about choosing how we need to go through the I don't want to so that we choose from our will is that correct yeah we need to work out the reasons why the will based reasons why we don't want to if we're going to change our will even even our, our will still needs to be engaged Mary said it nicely in this outline actually she says here um, I'll just read it I am constantly using my will even if I wish to deny that I am or wish or I, that I am, you know, not using my will or wish to do nothing, then she says, my will is always used in harmony with the condition of my soul. It is possible to use my will to challenge false beliefs within my soul, but the desire or aspiration to challenge these false beliefs also has to originate in my soul. And that's our problem. So it can't be willpower to motivate it because, it, as you know, many of you have tried that and it hasn't worked. So it, the real aspiration to address the I don't want to emotion has to come from within your soul. Now, the I don't, emo I don't want to emotion is driven by emotions such as anger. Like many of you are going to have to feel just really angry with God and the way the whole thing is that you really don't want to and you know you should and you know it's going to be less painful if you do but you really don't want to and just feel how frustrated you are about that and just feel it as a feeling. When you release that feeling then you'll get down to some sadness that, oh, I want other people <laughs> I want other people to be responsible. You know, my mum and dad and other people put these things in me. Why don't they have to release them rather than me? Right? 
And, and then you start realising that you're going to have to release them. Oh, you know, and, and you'll go through resistance to that, so like tantrums about that, and eventually you'll get to some sadness. That not that terrible that you have to release something someone else created within you? And, and wouldn't that then motivate you to never do that to another person? Can you see why you've got to go through all these things? You, you do have to go through these things to become more loving. And you might have you know, different uh, other emotions to feel, but once you feel that you don't want to, the I don't want to layer gets stripped off, and now you start feeling, like, oh, I really want to. Like, like, it's changing my life. There's a personal benefit to it, but there's also a universal benefit to it. There's a benefit to other people too, and I really want that. Right? And that motivates you. Yep. Yeah. Uh, my question was answered. Same. Okay. Um, if we come across to Lani, thanks. <coughs> now, guys, I'm over time now, so we're running on borrowed time. <laughs> um, I'm realising that I have a real will not to tell the truth. Yes. That I'll skirt, like it'll come up. Yep. And then straight away it goes into like the editing room where danger's stamped on it. And then it's sort of like put back down again and then a nice sugar-coated version comes out. Yes, and, and, that, and that toned down version is often so toned down that nobody can recognise it yeah. as truth anymore. Yeah, and then that's sort of a version that no one has to listen to anyway. Exactly, because, it, because when, it, when you said the other version, that's the version with power. Yeah. Right, the real version is the version. Truth is power, right? Anything that's lies less power. So when you're in truth, it's powerful. But but that's what your problem is. You don't want to have that power because you know that people might respond negatively to it. So there's the addiction. The addiction is uh, to avoid um, people being attacked and you know people's response. So the real addiction is feeling the feelings of being attacked how yeah. bad that feels that's yeah. the real addiction you don't want to feel yeah. what it feels like to be attacked and yeah. so you'd rather prevent attack instead so the way to overcome this is to just start just a little just start well any one of those four things or all of them faith yeah truth action mm. emotion so what one of the problems is you don't want to feel attacked so feel it mm. another problem is you don't want to act so act another problem is you don't want to have faith that if you act things will get better so so you need to develop some faith you, you see what i'm saying take the actions yeah. ta develop the par parts of you that say hang on a sec no i'm doing all this all wrong and it, and the only end result is going to be sin and the only end result of sin is pain for both myself and others so and uh, then i'm going to have things like compensatory effects of sin and and all these other things that i'll then complain about and say it's all terrible but at the end of the day i caused it all by not acting yeah and i can see that it it will really help the people that I wish to speak truth to. Of course it would. It might break a few eggs, but yep. it, in the long run... And you might end up with very few friends. Yeah. Yep, which is another fear. Yeah. At the end of the day, were they ever friends anyway? Yeah. No, no, it's just people I'm in addiction with. That okay, exactly. Any person who does not want to love and does not want to be in truth, I don't see how they could ever be your friend. At the end of the day, they can't be your friends because they're willing to lie, they're willing to do a ho be unloving at the drop of a hat. How, how can you rely on their friendship? You can't. You're far better off having no friends than, than friends like that, aren't you? Yeah. Friends yeah. like that. Yeah, it's a sort of work situations where I kind of keep compromising. and. Yeah, and be, be careful in work situations because work situations, you're getting paid to do something that is the belief in another and you're accepting to do that so if i was getting paid by you to do something and i agree to those terms and you tell me to go and uh you know cut down this tree that i think you shouldn't cut down i i, I still have to go and do it if i accept the terms of our agreement uh, yeah i think it's just in the, the little interactions with colleagues where the opportunity to tell truth is there and i'm not taking it yeah, yeah. There's plenty of opportunities on a daily basis that are not huge, but that are opportunities to tell the truth. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Can you see we're constantly, um, you know, we're constantly trying to weasel out of things. Like it sort of feels like to me. It's like, <laughs> as they say, I don't know why a weasel is actually, uh, <laughs> but, but we're slippery, slimy eels. Um, like, 
I, I uh, quite often, uh, we, myself and Mary say, that's a Teflon again. Like, <laughs> like, most of the things we say to people are like Teflon. They just fall away from you without even <laughs> being absorbed. And, and this is our problem, is that we, we have done this because of a lot of different choices we're making in regard to the exercise of our will. We need to start seeing it as our choice. It's no one else's choice but ours. Yeah. Now, one more question, Louise, and that's it for today on this subject. Well, just a quick question. Um, just your question about work and cutting down the tree. I would have thought that was unloving and you would have had to pay compensation for that. I no, I said, while I'm accepting... No, it's not always love, unloving to cut down a tree. There's times when it's loving. Yeah, no, that's true. Yeah, yeah. I was but, but anyway, um, you know, I, I have accepted a contract with the person who's telling me to do that. Right? I either no longer accept the contract, right, which means I'd now have to break my word, yeah. which, which is a worse problem than cutting down the tree. Can you see that? One's a physical act of a tree that can grow again. Another one is breaking my word, which is actually a spiritual act that's out of harmony with love. So, you know, it's worse than cutting down the tree, breaking my word. But you, um, you told us, like, in war, <laughs> if, if, you know, I go to war and kill someone under the order... How is this the same as cutting down a tree? Because you're paid to go to war. I mean... No, no, sorry, I don't see the analogy. Killing a person is a lot worse than cutting down a tree, right? Why would you ever enter a contract where you're asked to kill a person, whereas you may enter a contract to cut down a tree? Because it might be a loving thing to do. But it's, no, it's never loving killing a person. So how are they the same? Can you see with your analogies, you're often joining two things together that have no bearing on, e on each other whatsoever? No wonder you find logic out difficult under those circumstances. Yeah, I, just, yeah, I think I had a reaction about the, you know, you have to do something you're told at work if you're in that, have entered that contract. No, I was bringing up an example where, you, where the decision might be loving or unloving. The example I specifically gave was a tree for that reason. <laughs> you understand? Right? Because in under those circumstances, I've contracted to do the thing and... Possibly I even knew in advance that it might require those particular things. Right? If I'm a gardener in particular, I would definitely know in advance that it might, be, might require those particular things. And now if I disagree with it, what I, can't, I shouldn't be disagreeing with it, I should be just doing it because I made a contract with a person. And if I break the contract, I'm breaking my word and that's worse than cutting down the tree. So I can make a big song and dance about cutting down the tree and I'm not going to do it rah, rah, rah and make a big issue about it. At the end of the day, the biggest issue is the fact that, I, that, I, that I'd broken my word. Right? And that's the point I was getting at. That's not the same as deciding to be paid by the defence force to go and kill somebody. There's no way under the, any circumstance at all you'd enter a contract like that if you loved anybody. You would not enter that contract, would you? And so you wouldn't, you wouldn't engage it at all. It wouldn't, so it wouldn't even be a discussion after that. So, but, so the people that are going over to Iraq and killing people, you know, like the, in the Australian army, mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're suffering the consequences of, of course. their action. Of course. Not only are they, but also the whole of Australian society are going to suffer the consequences mm -hmm. of those actions because the actions are unloving, they're out of harmony with law, of course. As society, where we agree with the government do taking action that we're afraid of, and the average Australian is very afraid of a lot of things that they don't admit to, and that's one reason why we're over there is because the whole, all of the people in, in Australia obviously uh, have voted this government into power that allow this. And by the way, it didn't matter whether they're Liberal or Labor because both of them decided to go over there anyway. So, so it means that there is a genuine feeling in the Australian population of a fear of uh, things happening on the opposite side of the world that may in the long term affect us and so what we do is we try to mitigate those particular things by taking action that's unloving and that's within all of us and we all have responsibility to address that emotionally yeah Thank you. make sense yep 
Okay, so so what what I wanted to um, talk to, just mention in terms of this summary about understanding the will is you can see that there's a lot involved in understanding the will. You know, this is why it's going to take you a long time to learn about your will, <laughs> because because there is a lot involved in it. Uh, it is a major quality to develop, and to develop it, you're going to learn about things like when you haven't used your will, when you wanted other people to do things rather than you do things. Things, when you do things that are out of harmony with love, when you get other people to do things out of harmony with love, when you do things that are in harmony with love, when you help other people do things that are in harmony with love, there's all sorts of effects uh, that are going to have either a positive or a negative effect upon your will. And that's partly what you need to come to understand. The understand the use of your will, the gift that you've been given and, and how it's positively and negatively developed. Now, the reality is the majority of us have spent a lot of times negatively developing the exercise of our will, either avoiding will altogether or attempting to, or taking action that's out of harmony with love and truth. In other words, by sinning. And by the way, avoiding your will is a sin. So, so there are many people in the hells of the spirit world who have spent the majority of their life on earth avoiding the exercise of their will and as a result they are in the hells and in fact they are some of the hardest people to help. Right? The reason why is because they've spent all their time being like a slippery eel <laughs> trying to avoid the use of uh, the, their own choices and decisions and they have to come to recognise at some point that they have a responsibility to develop and use the will, this gift that they have actually been given. Do you follow? Yep. Alan, just one comment before we're done. That's why you said that people who've used their will in a really negative way have much more chance than someone who's not used their will at Frequently, all. Frequently, yes. Even though they've got to work through, once they understand working through sin and the pain of sin, once they understand how to do that, they usually often engage their desire and passion and their will to actually do that. Whereas people who haven't learned how to use their will at all, you've, it's very hard to convince them to use it and, and they have no development in terms of what's positive or negative either because they've never experimented with that. So they, so they don't know what positive use of their will is and they don't know what the outcome of the negative use of their will is either. And so they live in this sort of like laissez-faire, like don't care either way type of thing for years and years and years and years and they're there doing what they used to do and all this, plotting away, doing a bit of work here and a bit of work there and have, you know, thinking that they're enjoying their life but they're halfway in the hills in dark, the darkness or semi-darkness, not doing anything and not shifting at all and they are the hardest people to motivate to shift. Whereas a person who's passionately used their will in the wrong direction usually ends up in the hells in a lot of pain. Once they stop doing it, they feel their pain. And when somebody comes along and tells them how to repent for their pain, they decide, oh, I'm going to use my will to do that. That makes sense to me. <laughs> and then, go, of course, they do it. They feel the positive results of that. That builds their faith. And so what they do then, they go, this is awesome. I'm going to do that as much as I can possibly do it. And that's what they do. Yeah. So... Oftentimes they get to be the people who have progressed the most, you know. Cornelius is an example of one of those people, right? <laughs> yeah. There's plenty of examples. You know, 14 people, four, seven soul pairs return and quite a number of those soul pairs used their will out of harmony to love while they are on earth because they had a very developed use of their will. Cornelius had a very developed use of his will by the time I met him. And uh, as a result of that, and he felt the pain of his, the use of his will negatively. So by, the, by that time, he's, once he knows what to do, it's completely different, right? Yeah. I've got to finish, guys, because otherwise I'm not going to get onto the next <laughs> subject, which is just as important as this one. So uh, what we'll do is we'll have a break now for 20, it's a 20 minute break. So if we can come back at quarter past two, I'm running around about quarter of an hour late at this stage.